Welcome to the Unapologetic Mompreneur, the podcast for mums with an online business who are ready to take back their time, home, business and self so they can restore the balance and thrive both at home and at work without feeling like they have to choose between the two. I'm your host, Sarah Dew, life and biz coach for mumpreneurs. I'm also a mum, stepmom, wife, introvert, breast cancer survivor and your mentor for making a change for the better. I've learned how to go from surviving to thriving and unapologetically create a business I love and the life I want for me and my family without worrying about what other people think. And now I'm here to help you do the same. Because being an unapologetic mumpreneur doesn't mean that we're selfish or that we don't care about others. It simply means that we are not afraid to show up as our true authentic selves, to step into our purpose, do what we know is right for ourselves and the ones we love, and take the steps we need to take to make our dream life and business a reality. Join me each week where I'll be sharing all of my best tips and strategies, plus the occasional dose of tough but a gentle love to help you feel empowered, motivated, and confident to take action so that you can become the mum, wife, biz owner, and woman you know you are meant and deserve to be. So are you ready to unapologetically create a business and life you love? Let's do this. Hey there, and welcome to episode three of the Unapologetic Mumpreneur podcast. In this episode, I want to share and introduce you to the four pillar framework that is not only the foundation of my business, but it is also the four pillar framework that I take my one on one coaching clients through to help them take back their time, their home, their businesses and themselves so they can go from surviving to thriving and create a business and life they love that is on their terms without worrying about what other people think. Not only that, it's also the four pillar framework that I use every single day in my own life to help me stay focused on what truly matters and to help me keep showing up as my true authentic self and be unapologetic in everything I do and everything I do in my business. So what are these four pillars? They are love your family, love your home, love yourself and love your business. These four pillars came about after a lot of trial and error and figuring out how I was going to run my life and show up authentically and asking myself what really mattered and what I wanted to focus on most and then how to prioritize things and set goals and and make those dreams of mine with my business and my family life become a reality. And you know, there are so many different areas that we could look down and focus on to in our lives if we break everything down and we think about all of the different aspects of family and friends and finances and personal growth and everything else. But when every time I looked at it, I realized that there were four overarching areas, which I then came to call pillars, four different areas of my life that when I started focusing on each one of those in turn and doing what I could to nurture them and and help them grow and you know feed and water them and make my grass green that when I focused on those I realized they were the key they were the secret to creating that life that I wanted to taking back control and to take back my time my home myself and everything else they were the key and every time I worked and focused on those that's when I saw changes And any time that things started slipping or I started to feel overwhelmed or things weren't quite going to plan or I was feeling lost, I realized that I was neglecting one of these four areas of my life. And that's then what came about for me to then go on that journey of living a more authentic, unapologetic life, which I then brought into my business. And I now use as my coaching program framework with my coaching clients to help them do the same. And I want to share these four pillars with you today so that you can take them and use them and use the share the strategies that I'm going to share with each one to help you kickstart taking that journey towards becoming an unapologetic mompreneur. Now, before we dive into each one of those in turn, and I share a bit more detail of each one and how you can use them and help them make them work for you, I just want to give you a quick kind of overview of how they all fit together so that you can kind of visualize how it works. So if you imagine your home for a second, it has four walls and it has a roof. Those four walls are exactly like these four pillars. They are the foundation. They are 
the each area of your life and it, if you nurture them and keep them strong and you build the foundation within each one of them they are going to be super super strong and they are going to support the roof and that roof is your life the roof is the life that you want to live the roof is the life that you love it's the life where you are creating and running your business of your dreams, where you are seeing success in your business. You are doing the things that light you up and make you happy. You are living the family life that you want to live, the life, the roof, the life that you are jumping out of bed every day, super excited to see what the day brings rather than wishing it was the weekend again already. And all of that amazing life that you totally deserve and that you are totally capable of making happen all comes down to focusing on and nurturing those four pillars. When you work on those pillars, when you hone in on what really matters to you most in each of those pillars, when you make the time to take care of them, just like you would take care of your garden, of nurturing your garden and watering that grass and sowing those seeds and nurturing them and allowing them to grow and then doing the things every day to just gently maintain those. They become so strong, they flourish. And that is how you grow and become authentic in everything you are doing and unapologetically create the life that you love by nurturing each one of those pillars. That is what helps keep your walls strong, your pillars strong, and help keep that roof on of that life and love that you create and the life that you want in your family and for yourself. Anytime that you stop neglect, if you start neglecting any one of those areas, or you find that things aren't going right in your life, I guarantee you it will be one of these pillars that you've been lacking or nurturing or not showing up in as your true authentic self. And then you can know which one to focus on dive back in, give it some TLC, and soon you'll see that you start to flourish again. So let's dive in and take a quick look at each one in turn, what that pillar means and how you can make it work for you so that you can create the business and the life for you and your family that you know you deserve. The first pillar is love your family and it is all about designing a life for you and your family that is on your terms. Because here's the thing, you know exactly what your family needs. Nobody knows you and your family. Nobody knows your family, the characteristics, the traits, the needs of all of your children, of your spouse, of your partner. Nobody else knows what your family needs better than you. And there is a lot of noise out there about how we should parent and how we should do things with our children and how we should you know, invest time with them and the way we should behave with them and everything else that we should be doing that causes us to evaluate whether or not we are a good parent and then beat ourselves up if we feel like we're failing or we're not living up to those expectations and opinions of others. But actually, when you stop for a moment and ask yourself, how do I actually want to parent? What works for me and my family? What feels right for me and my family? And you start taking those steps and start doing the things that you know is right for you and your family. That's when things start to change. That's when you can start nurturing your pillar. And then when you're nurturing that pillar and you're focusing on the things that matter most to you and your family, that's when you bring the connection back. That's when your kids start arguing less. That's when they feel better connected to each other as brother and sister. And then that is also when you feel more connected to them all and you are doing things every day and on the weekends and making the most of those little pockets of time where you are doing things that light you up and feel you connected together as a family. So how do you take that and get started with that pillar? Dive into this by asking what you love right now about your family. Think about the things that you love the most. What do you, you know, all of the things that you do together, the way you live your life together, what do you love? What matters most to you? Is it quality family time on a Friday night? Is it having, like for us, one of our absolute favorite things is having brunch together on a Sunday morning. What do you love to do with your family? And how do you want to run things? What would work for you? And how would you like to switch things up as well? Is there anything going on in your family life right now that isn't quite working? Maybe you want a bit more time together. Maybe you have other things and goals or places to go and play and things to see that you haven't done yet that you would like to do. What can you do to nurture and feel more connected to your kids and do things to help you nurture that love your family pillar? If you were to show up every day unapologetically for your family and you were to live an unapologetic family life, what would that look like for you? The second pillar is love your home. It's all about designing a home life 
and helping you run your home in a way that fits for you and your family. It's about creating routines and systems and schedules that work for you, that help you make your home run like a relatively oil, well-oiled machine and actually help you keep your home relatively clean and tidy most of the time at least as well. My best advice for you on how to get started with this pillar and nurturing this pillar is to take a look at how everything is done at home, is to think, you know, are there areas that I want to declutter? Does our home, is our home a true reflection of who we really are? Have I got routines and systems in place that are helping me run my day to day and take away some of the strain and just put things on autopilot to make life easier to manage? Have a look at the routines that you've got. Ask yourself if they're working for you and then ask yourself, what can you do to switch them up? Or are there any new routines that you can create? Now, I'll be diving in a little bit later in a forthcoming episode all about the different routines that you can have at home to make home life easier to manage so that you can nurture this pillar. But for a moment, the favorite routines that I have that you might want to take a look at is my housework routine, a cleaning routine. I have a Sunday planning routine where I look at what's going on the week ahead, work out my top priorities, and I do my grocery shopping online. And then I also have my weekend routine that I like to do with my family. So we'll make one day all about getting stuff done around the home. And then the second day is all about family time together. And that really helps me nurture the pillars. It helps me stay focused on what matters most with the Love Your Home pillar. And also with the bringing in of the routine for the weekend with my family, it helps link the home pillar with the family pillar too. Because that's the thing with these four pillars, they don't stand all on their own. They all fit together and they all bounce off of one another too. And so you'll find as you start going through this, that there are lots of different ways that you can link the pillars together to help you truly, truly nurture them and create that cohesive, holistic lifestyle that you want for you and your family. The third pillar is love yourself. Now, really, this should probably be the first pillar because it is the most important of all, but it's all about taking care of you because we know that self-care is important, but for some reason or another, we just don't make it as much of a priority as it should. For me personally, I went through a really long battle of every time I tried to put myself first or do something for me. I would feel guilty that I was not focusing on my family, that I was neglecting all of my other roles that I needed to do around the home and that it was easier to just bump my self-care to the bottom of the list for the sake of one more load of laundry or to tick something else off of my to-do list. But after many, many rounds of burnout, I realized that I needed to start putting myself first. And I learned that there was there is nothing selfish about self-care. Nothing matters more than taking care of ourselves so that, and it's completely selfless as well. There is nothing more selfless than taking care of ourselves so that we can take care of the ones that we love. Whether it's for five minutes, 10 minutes, an hour, or even a whole afternoon, we deserve and we need to find the time to put ourselves first and fill our cups too and do the things that make us happy. And so to nurture this pillar, ask yourself, how is your self-care going? When was the last time you did something for yourself? And how can you do something today that will only take five minutes that is going to do something for you that will help you rest and recharge? And then how can you build that into your diary over the days and the weeks and the months? And again, we'll be doing another podcast episode all about how to do this in the coming weeks and months. But for now, just give yourself a quick stop check of what can you do to make your well-being more of a priority my absolute favorite way of doing this that I recommend with my clients when they are just getting started is to spend a few minutes making a happy list is to make a note of all of the little things that you can do that make you happy and smile just to make give yourself a little bit of time for you it could be listening to your favorite piece of music it could be jumping and dancing around to your favorite track in the kitchen it could be running that long hot bubble bath I absolutely love that on a Sunday evening is my absolute favorite way to recharge and have a few minutes to myself it could be going for a walk around the block or taking a hoof around your local forest getting out in nature it could be spending a few minutes reading a chapter of your book or journaling or meditating it doesn't have to be anything huge or massive but make a list of all of the little things that you can do that make you happy and then find some time each day to spend a couple of minutes doing it
The last pillar is love your business. And that is all about creating a business that is on your terms, of running it the way that you want to to run it, in a way that works for you, instead of trying to follow all of the advice out there of how you should do everything. You know your personality better than anybody else. You know what works for you. You know how to work that lights you up. You know what to do in a way that feels right for you. You know what your comfort zone levels are and all of that. And it's totally up to you to run your business how you want to do it. You get to set your hours. You get to decide what you are working on when. You get to choose what what offers and what services you want to provide. You get to choose what social media platforms you want to show up on. You get to choose how many client calls or how many clients you work on each week and each month. You don't have to overwhelm yourself with it all by trying to fill it up with everything else of going out and doing 10, 15 discovery calls a week of posting on Instagram three or four times a day of showing up live on Instagram and going live in your Facebook group and doing all of the things. You don't have to do that. It's your business. You get to call the shots and you get to share your message how you want to share it. Being unapologetic and nurturing that love your business pillar is all about being honest about how you want to show up. Because if we are creating a business, if we are designing a business that we want, we are doing it for a reason. We are doing it because we are passionate about something. We are doing it because we are called to serve. We have this desire burning inside us that there is a specific group of people that we want to help. And by doing that and being staying true to ourselves, that is how we are going to grow our tribe and grow our bank balance and grow a successful business because we are being unapologetic and nurturing that love your business pillar. Getting started in this, ask yourself what works for you? What do you want to offer in your business? Forget for a moment everything that everybody else is telling you out there or whatever course you're going through right now. Ask yourself, what do you want to offer in your business? What feels right for you? What are you passionate about? What is your message? What do you want to share? What change do you want to help make with people? How do you want to help other people grow? What is it that you want to offer? And then where do you want to show up? Where are you most un- are most comfortable about showing up in? If your video isn't for you, don't do video. If podcasting isn't for you, don't do podcasting. Not interested in blogging? Don't do blogging. What lifts you up? What services do you want to offer? Do you want to work one-on-one? Do you want to have done-for-you packages? Do you want to have a group, pro- group, a group coaching program or something else? It's your business and you get to design it on your terms. There we go. Those are the four pillars, the four pillar framework to creating a business and life that you love that are on your terms. They are the exact framework that I use every single day to help me design a business and life that is true to me, to help me show up authentically every single day, both as in my with my family and in my business as the boss of my business. They are the all of the frameworks that help me show up unapologetically and live my life unapologetically without worrying about what other people think. To get started with these, they can totally, totally work for you as well. As I said, they are tried and tested for me over the years and I have refined and tweaked and tuned them. And I'm going to dive into all of these so much more detail over the coming weeks and months. But to get started, just spend some time thinking about each of these pillars and asking yourself where you are right now with them and what an ideal life in each one of these would look like for you and what you can do today. Pick one thing in each area that you could do today to help you nurture your family, to help you nurture your home, to help you nurture yourself and to help you nurture your business. What can you do to water and nurture the gardens of each of those areas to help you strengthen those pillars and build those foundations and take those initial steps to kickstarting creating the life and business that you know you deserve? I would love to hear from you which one of those you're going to nurture on first and your ideas for doing that. So if you want to shoot me a message, I would absolutely love to hear from you. Just head on over to Instagram at the unapologetic mumpreneur and let me know which one you are going to focus on first today. And I will chat with you very, very soon. Thank you so much for joining me for another installment of the unapologetic mumpreneur podcast. 
If you like what you heard, be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you never miss an episode. And if you have a moment, I would love for you to leave me a rating and a review so that other mumpreneurs can find this podcast too. Here's to unapologetically becoming the mum, wife, biz owner and woman you know you are meant and deserve to be. I can't wait to chat with you in the next episode. Bye for now.